Hello and welcome to Physics Teacher. In this tutorial for grade 10 science, I'm going to teach you how to balance chemical equations. So let's get started. Properly balance chemical equations, we need to make sure we know how to count atoms inside of compounds. So let's go over the basics of this. And if you want to follow along, you can download these handouts right from the description for free. So go check it out and come right back. All right, so if we have a subscript, this is what we call a subscript, that two there, that two tells us how many atoms we have in the element preceding it. So in this case, we have the element hydrogen, and we are told that we have a total of two atoms. Now, if we go down to the next one, we have calcium and fluorine. So we have calcium, and fluorine. Now there's no number written next to calcium. A lot of my students like to say there are no calcium. But if there wasn't any calcium, I wouldn't have written the symbols in the first place. For example, zinc. There's clearly no zinc because I didn't write zinc. Um, so when we don't have a scrub subscript, that represents one atom. So we have one calcium and then next to fluorine, we have two fluorines. All right, moving down, here we have a polyatomic ion, and we put it in brackets, so this subscript represents how many of those polyatomic ions that we have. So just like math, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply that 2 into every element in the bracket. So we have three elements here. We have copper, and we have nitrogen. And we have oxygen. Okay, our copper is just over here. It's not in the bracket and it has no number, so it's just one. The nitrogen in the bracket has only one, but we multiply it by the two outside of the bracket. So that's two times one, which is two. And the oxygen, we have three, and we multiply it by that two outside of the bracket so we have six oxygen in our next example we've got hydrogen again and just as before we have this little two here again that two represents how many atoms of the element preceding it that we have so what does this two mean that two is a coefficient and it tells you how many molecules you have in this case of water so what we have to do then is multiply the number of atoms by the number of molecules to figure out how many total atoms of each element we have so we're going to start with hydrogen so we've got h for hydrogen and then we also have oxygen so hydrogen we have two atoms and then two molecules of water so that's two times two which is four and oxygen, we have one atom and two water molecules. So two times one is two. Now we've got sort of everything in this last example. We've got subscripts, we have brackets, and we have coefficients out in front. And we have, let's see, we have calcium, phosphorus, and oxygen. So we have three types of atoms. We have calcium, phosphorus, and oxygen so if we start with calcium that's outside of the bracket so we have three calcium atoms in each compound and we have three of those compounds so three times three is nine for phosphorus that's in the bracket we have one of them then we multiply by the two outside of the bracket so one times two is two and then we multiply by that total of three compounds all together. So one times two is two, times three is six. So we have six phosphorus atoms. Lastly, oxygen, we have four in the bracket. Then we multiply by the two outside of the bracket, so that's eight. And we need three of all of those, so three times eight is going to be 24 oxygen atoms. 
There's one more example here, but I'm going to let you try that one and you let me know the answers in the comments. Let's move on to balancing. All right, again, this you can find and follow along for free inside of the description if you would like a copy of these handouts. So now that we know how to count atoms, we need to know how to balance a chemical equation. It's important to balance because in all chemical equations, mass is conserved. So step one is going to be first to write the chemical equations. A lot of times it starts with words, which is why nomenclature is so important. And if you need help with nomenclature, I have a full tutorial going over everything you need to know in nomenclature. So you can check out that link above. Okay, so in this case, for example, we're going to start with this example. Let's consider the reaction between hydrogen gas and oxygen gas to produce water. So just let me write this aside here. So let's say you have um, one substance plus another substance makes, I don't know, something. It's important to know that these are called your reactants. And these, you may have one or you may have more than one, but everything to the right of our arrow is our products. So when it says hydrogen gas and oxygen gas produce water, water is our product. So water is H2O. That is our product that is being produced. And our reactants are the hydrogen gas plus our oxygen gas. So question, why did I write hydrogen, oxygen with two atoms each? This is very important. You might have heard of Hofbrinkel before. It's a great mnemonic, but certain elements such as hydrogen, um, oxygen, fluorine, bromine, iodine, nitrogen, and chlorine. That's all of them. That's why Hofbrinkel, whenever they're by themselves and not bonded with any other element, they bond with themselves to form a diatomic molecule, meaning two atoms in that molecule. So anytime you see one of these by themselves, you will put a two next to them. Now, typically, we also write the states next to everything. But for grade 10, let's not worry too much about that. Let's just work on balancing this equation because something is clearly wrong here. Right? We have two oxygen atoms forming something that only has one oxygen atom. That can't happen. Mass has to be conserved in a chemical reaction. So now that we've written down our reaction, we are going to count how many atoms we have on both sides. So let's start with hydrogen. So hydrogen, here we have two, and here we have two. So initially that looks okay. For oxygen, here we have two, but here we have one. So that's a problem we're going to need to start to balance. Now, how we're going to balance is we're going to change a coefficient. This is very, very important. You cannot fix our oxygen problem by writing a two here because that changes the product. The product is now hydrogen peroxide, not water. But that's not what you get when you combine hydrogen and oxygen you get water in this reaction. So you can't change the product. So let's undo that. The only thing you can do is change how much of the product you get, and that's the amount of molecules. And that you, is represented by a coefficient. Right? So what you can do is you can add coefficients. So let's go down. We're gonna start adding these coefficients. Okay, so very important, as I said, do not change the subscripts. You are only going to change the coefficient. So once we put a coefficient of two here, we can recount our oxygen atoms. Here we have two, and now here we have a total of one times two, so two. Of course, this does lead to an additional problem because when we change the amount of molecules, we not just only change the amount of oxygen in that molecule, we change the amount of hydrogen as well. So now we have 
2 times 2, 4 hydrogen atoms. So we need to go into our products and make sure we also have 4. But currently we only have 2. But we can fix that by writing a coefficient in front. Once you've done that, double check things. Okay, so let's count. So here we have 4 hydrogen in our reactants and 4 hydrogen in our products. Great. We have 2 oxygen in our reactants and we have 2 oxygens in our products. So now we can say it is balanced. If it's not, then go back and continue to count atoms and change coefficients. Let's try some other examples. Here we have sodium plus iodine. Notice that sodium doesn't have a 2. It's not part of Hofbrinkel, but iodine is. But then when they're combined, sodium iodine produces the chemical formula NaI, not NaI2. Again, go check out my video on nomenclature if you want to know why. But let's focus on balancing this. We only have one iodine in our products, whereas we have two in our reactants. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a two here. But that leads to having two sodiums in our products, but only one in our reactants. So we can fix that by writing a two. And now the equation is balanced. Let's try another one. This one's a little tricky. It looks like sulfur is balanced, but oxygen is not. Here we have two oxygens in our reactants, but three in our products. That would mean we would have to multiply this O2 by a fraction. But we can't do that. That doesn't make sense. You don't have three halves of an oxygen molecule. You can only put integers. So here's a trick you can do. If you have an odd number somewhere, it's usually helpful since we clearly can only have an even number in our reactants because any integer multiplied by 2 is going to be even. Let's force our products to be even as well. So if I multiply this by 2, I now have 6 oxygen. And so I can balance the oxygens now by putting a 3 here. Of course, this sent our sulfur out of whack because we now have two sulfurs in our products, but that's easily fixed by putting two sulfurs in our reactants, and now it is balanced. Let's look at the next one. Here's another trick I recommend you do. Start by balancing um, the elements that you that don't appear more than once in either your reactants or products. So here we have oxygen appearing twice in our products. Now in this case, we would start with hydrogen. We have two hydrogen and two hydrogen. So that's already balanced. That shouldn't be there. Um, but in more difficult cases, it's a lot easier to count all of the elements that first only appear in one compound in both your reactants and products and leaving the more challenging ones till the end. Typically the more challenging ones are oxygen and hydrogen. So leave those till the end. Now we have the same problem here, right? We have a two oxygens here. So whatever number we put in front, we're going to end up with an even number of oxygen atoms. Whereas over here we have one and two. So let's multiply this by two because then I'm forcing this oxygen, or this molecule, sorry, to have two oxygen atoms. So now we have two and two for a total of four oxygens in our products. So I can put a coefficient of two here to also have four oxygens in our reactants. And then if you check your hydrogens, four hydrogens and four hydrogens, they're balanced as well. This leads to a similar problem. Okay, um, like I said, leave hydrogen till the end. Hydrogen and oxygens count last. Let's start with nitrogen. Here we have two nitrogens and one nitrogen. So we'll put a two here. Now let's count hydrogens. 
Here we have 2 times 3, so 6 hydrogens, and only 2 here. So what times 2 will give us 6? And our answer is 3. And now it's balanced. Over here, you can see hydrogen appearing twice in our product. So let's leave that till the end. We'll start with sodium. So we have one sodium and one sodium. Great. Uh, oxygen, we have one oxygen and one oxygen. Great. Oh, so we're just left with going straight to the hydrogens anyways. Uh, but similar problem, we have two here. So we can only end up with an even number of hydrogens in our reactants. So let's multiply this one by a two to force the same issue. So now we have a total of two and two hydrogens, which is four. So we can put a two over here to also have four hydrogens. Now let's double check everything else. So we have two oxygens and two oxygens. So great. Here we have one sodium, but now we have two sodiums over here. So we can fix that with this coefficient. Now I have more problems to try. You can download these, give them a try yourself. Let me know how you do and if you need any help with any of them. But let me give you one last tip on this last one. Here we have some polyatomic ions. So here we have nitrate and here we have nitrate. If the polyatomic ions remain intact in both the products and the reactants, just count those. Don't bother counting all the nitrogens and all the oxygens. Let's look at nitrates. So here we have two of those brackets of nitrates. And here we only have one of those brackets. Here we didn't write brackets, but that's okay. One. So I'm going to put a two out in front. Okay, here we have phosphates. One phosphate and two phosphates. So I'm going to fix that by putting a 2 here. It makes things a lot easier. Now we can count other things. Here we have 6 potassiums. And here we have only 2 potassiums. Oh, that's going to be a problem. That's okay. We can erase that 2 and put a 6. It's going to mess up with our nitrates, but let's just uh, work with magnesium first. Here we have 3 magnesium. And here we have 1. So let's put a three here. All right, so now let's count how many nitrates we have again. So here we have two, but we have three of them. So three times two is six. And here we have six, six nitrates. Oh, well, that worked. Uh, double check phosphates. Here we have two phosphates, two phosphates, three magnesium, three magnesium, six potassium, and six potassium. This is now balanced. Give the rest a try and let me know how you did in the comments.